So we start with um, question five. So the question says, without solving the equation, determine the nature of the roots of the foreign equations. So how do we attend to the question of the nature? So we say, to determine the nature, to determine the nature of roots, we use the Justinian twist. The discriminant is b squared minus 4ac. And we are saying if, if it is zero, then you have equal real roots. Okay, that's one. Two, if it's greater than zero, then you have two distinct real roots. And three, if G is less than zero, then you have imaginary roots. Lastly, we could combine one and two So if D is greater or equal to zero, then you have real roots. We don't know whether they are equal or they are distant, but all we know is that they are real. So to answer question five, question five A, all we need is to check the nature. So we get the discriminant which is b squared minus 4ac, where our a is 4, b is 20, c is 25. So we we'll have 4 squared minus 4 times a, which is 4, and c, which is 25. This one is going to give us, um, I mean, it will be 20 squared, sorry. 20 squared, which is our B. So we have A, B, C. That is 400 minus 400. When you multiply here, you get 16 by 25, that is 400, which is equal to zero. So what's the nature of the roots? They are equal to the roots. Like that. Okay. What about B? For B, again, the same discriminant. So now we go straight to the numbers. So we have 4 squared minus 4 by 1 by 7. That would be. 16 minus 28, which is equal to negative 12, less than zero. So we have minus zero. So if you see the word nature, nature of roots, if you see this, use this image. That's the key then. So you can finish up on C and D. Okay. Do we have any question? We want to remove this so you can put another one. We now want to move to question six. Uh 
Okay, so it's clear. Question six. Question six is saying the roots of the given equation are alpha and beta. Find the value of the following. So what do we know about the sum? The sum and product of roots. The first thing is that if we add the roots alpha plus beta, we will get the equation negative b over a. And that if you multiply alpha and beta, we will get c over a. So we'll have these two equations, this one, and this one. Those are the equations that we want to use in this setup. Okay. So in the case of question six, we're now attending to question six. Question six, the first thing you do is you say, okay, I've been told that alpha and beta are the roots of this equation. So first, I'll find alpha plus beta, which is negative b. So I'll have negative, the b is negative 4 over a. a is 2. This is coming out to be 4 over 2, which is positive 2. The second thing I do is to find the product. So now we find the product alpha beta, which is C over A, and C is five, A is two. Then now you can attend to question A. What does A say? Add one over alpha plus one over beta. So we'll carry on the addition. Get the common denominator. You multiply alpha and beta. That divides it. Alpha beta divided by alpha, it will give us beta. That beta times one, the numerator, will have beta plus. Alpha beta divided by beta, we get alpha. Times one, we have alpha. But we have found what alpha plus beta is. It's here. It's two. Over the product, again, we have found it. It's five over two. This can be written as two times two over five, which is going to be four over five. Like that. Interesting. What about D? D is alpha squared beta plus alpha beta squared. Here we need to factorize first. We can see alpha and alpha there. So we factor out alpha, beta and beta, we factor out beta. Then when we divide alpha squared beta divided by alpha beta, we get alpha plus alpha beta squared divided by alpha beta, we get beta. Alpha beta, we know it's five over two. Alpha plus beta, we know it's two. So the answer here is five. Okay. Let's go to B. B is here. You expand alpha times alpha. You get alpha beta plus alpha times one. We get alpha plus one times beta, we get beta plus one times one, we get one. This will give us alpha beta plus alpha plus beta plus one. So alpha beta, we know it's five over two plus alpha plus beta, 
is 2 plus 1. That is 5 over 2 plus 3, which is 11 over 2. Then we do the fraction thing here. Interesting, isn't it? So we now have C. Then from C, you can come to E. Then now you can answer any question. So to answer C, I'm going to do it on the board. Here, yeah. C. C is alpha squared plus beta squared. We don't have an expression of that kind. What we have is alpha plus beta and it's given as five over two. We also have alpha beta. I mean, alpha plus beta is given as two. Then alpha beta is five over two. Now we are asked to find alpha squared plus beta squared. So what we will do is, let us take a study. Since we know what alpha plus beta is, what happens if we square it? It will be alpha plus beta multiplied by alpha plus beta, which is equal to alpha squared plus alpha beta plus alpha beta plus beta squared, which is alpha squared plus two alpha beta plus beta squared. This thing we have on the left is alpha plus beta squared. Now we see that what we are looking for here actually is only this part plus that one. This is not fair. So if we take this the other side, we are going to have alpha plus beta squared minus two alpha beta b equal to alpha squared plus beta squared. Isn't that nice? We have found an expression in the form of the sum and the product. Attend to this one. So it means for C, we are looking for alpha squared plus beta squared. So we'll write it in this form. In the form alpha plus beta squared minus two alpha beta. That means where there is alpha plus beta now, we know it's two. Minus two alpha beta, it's five over two. So then we'll have four minus five. Which is equal to Okay, what about E? What about E? E is, E is alpha minus beta squared. This is alpha minus beta multiplied by alpha minus beta. So we'll get alpha squared 
minus 2 out of theta plus theta squared. So you rearrange. You have alpha squared plus theta squared minus 2 alpha theta. This one is one we have found here to be negative 1. And then this one, we haven't said, but we know that the inner is 5 over 2. So we have minus 1 minus 5, which is equal to minus 6. Like that. So you can actually do most of that, uh, most of the work remaining there. So if you look at the fellowship now, we are saying we have covered the whole question six. Let me watch you. So you guys, you do F, G, and H. You just get the common denominator, and then they will always group themselves in alpha, beta, alpha, plus beta. So that we come to question seven. What does question seven say? Is there a question there? Okay. Question seven. A. If the roots of the equation that are alpha and beta, just after reading that, if the roots are alpha and beta. I should first thing is to find the sum. What is the sum from the equation given? It's negative four. Uh, I mean it's um negative b. So I put the negative b over a, which is negative. What is b? B is negative four over a, which is one. So the answer there is four. Let's see. The second thing is we find the product. That is C over A, which is 2 over 1, which is 2. That's the first thing to do. Second, write down an equation whose roots are these. Now you ask yourself a question. If I had an equation AX squared, plus bx plus c equal to zero. And you happen to divide it by a, it will end up being x squared plus b over ax plus c over a equal to zero. What does that mean? That means that here, uh, if you can see, alpha plus beta uh, is the sum. So let's call it S. It's negative B over A. The sum. And let's call alpha beta the product C over A. So now, if we want, here we have a positive B over A here. So let's make B over A the subject here. So we we'll divide by negative. So we're going to have B over A equal to negative S. So if we come here, we're going to say, okay, so now we have X squared minus SX plus P is equal to zero. So then the expression of the quadratic equation is going to be this one in general. This is the general expression. X squared minus SX plus P is equal to zero is the general equation. Where S is the sum of the two roots, P is the product of the two roots.
So what are we given? Okay, so we are given that we must find an equation whose roots are these. X alpha plus three and beta plus three. But we have already identified the sum of these roots in terms of alpha and beta to be four, and the product in terms of alpha and beta to be two. Okay, so now we want to use the equation that we have established to be the general one. So we are saying, okay, from what we are given now, let's get S. So S is going to be the sum alpha plus beta plus, I mean alpha plus three plus beta plus three. This will give us alpha plus beta plus three plus three, six. But when we know what alpha plus beta is, we know it's four. So we have four plus six, which is 10. And then let's get the product as well. Alpha plus three multiplied by beta plus three. That is alpha times beta plus alpha times three plus beta times three plus three times three. This is going to be uh, alpha beta plus we factor out the common three. Then we have alpha plus beta plus nine. And alpha beta, where we know what alpha beta is, is two plus three times alpha plus beta, that is three times four, which is four plus nine. So we're getting what? We're getting um, 11 plus four, that's 23. So now we have found our S and our P. So the equation therefore is going to be X squared minus S which is 10, X plus P which is 23, is equal to zero. That is the expression that we have. That you guys so, use, sir, yes? it's possible to to solve uh, to solve the same question without uh, establishing that that equation you, you said there, which is x x squared minus a six plus p. Yeah, it's possible. Oh, just use the product in the sum. Yes, that is uh, that's a long way. Yeah, but it's the same thing. You add within the equation, you add and then multiply the other side. But you still be doing the same thing. Okay, sir. Okay. I need this one for you to do. We got to B. If the roots of the equation are alpha and beta, write down an equation whose roots are two over alpha and two over beta. So this one, we need to work out. Practice as well. This is what came last year. So just practice for the sake of practice. You know that such, when, when it's a fraction, you need to be careful. With how you handle and people like asking such kind of questions. I want you to practice it so that you see how it can go. And then here also you can apply the same principle. There is nothing much. It's just when you add you get p and you multiply you get q and then these are your roots so you add them and you multiply them. 
to be given the wrong thing, but it's nice for practice because when you're you are seeing what happens as you go on. Okay. Let's go to question eight. Question eight says, find the value of k or the range of values of k in each case below. The first case being the roots of this equation differ by two. So what case are we talking about? If the root differ by two, then we know that, well, if the first root is alpha, the second root could actually be alpha plus two. Because the difference is two when you subtract. So if my first root is alpha, then beta can be written as alpha plus two because that's the difference. What are we looking for? We're looking for k. So obviously, if we add these two roots, so if we add alpha plus alpha plus two, we should get five over three. Because this is our A, this is our B. So to get negative B over A, that would be five over three. But then this alpha plus alpha is just two alpha. Then the other two can be taken the other side, minus two. So that then we have two alpha is equal to three down, then five minus six, so we get minus one over three. Divide by two, divide by two. So alpha is going to be negative one over six. So now we have found the value of alpha. Then we can go straight and find the value of k now. If alpha is negative one over six, then to get k, we we'll use the product. Alpha multiplied by alpha plus two is equal to k over three. To cross multiply, we'll have three alpha, alpha plus two is equal to k. So what is k then? It's three, negative one over six, negative one over six plus two. That is this one here, this is two. So we get negative half, and then inside six down, then you have negative one plus four, that is 11. So we get negative 11 over positive 12. Like that. Okay. So because we are told that the, the roots differ by two, it means that if I have their sum, I mean, if the first one is alpha, the second one can be expressed in terms of alpha as just alpha plus two. Because the difference is two anyway. So then I know if I add the two roots, I get negative b over c. I mean negative b over a, which is five over three in that case. Again, we do the same for alpha beta. The product. Now you are doing the product knowing what your alpha is. it becomes an easy thing. Okay. The other one. Part two. 
the roots are equal and opposite. So you have, if you have the first one is alpha, the second one is also alpha. That is the issue of equal. And then they are opposite, meaning that if the first one is alpha, the second one is negative alpha. That's where opposite comes in. So we know that if we add them, we must get negative B. In this case, that is negative A minus one over A, which is three. But this is zero. So we have zero is equal to negative K plus one over three. Because multiplied by three, we have negative k plus one is equal to zero. So that negative k is equal to negative one. And so k is positive one. Then here, the roots are real and distant. So use a discriminant uh, b squared minus 4ac greater than zero, e or part three. So you say two minus k squared minus 4ac, that is four by negative two k greater than zero. So you solve that as an infinite. Then part four has only root three. So if root three, if three is the only root, it means that uh, when we substitute three in here, when we substitute three where the x, uh, that should satisfy the equation. So you have two, three squared plus three k minus 15 should be zero because every root satisfies the equation. That is nine by two, 18. So you have three K, 18 minus 15, that is three. So when you take another side, it will be negative. Then divide. So K is equal to negative one. So here we have used the fact that every root of, of a quadratic, when you substitute it, where it's X, you get zero. If you substitute that is x, you will be supposed to get zero. Okay, so for you to enjoy this, let me give you a time you practice from there uh, up to here. Also try B. Keep moving until you reach 12. And that's where I'll start from tomorrow. So I'll start from 8A part 5. We'll start from there. We should be able to finish this up to before polynomial and then start polynomial slowly. Okay. So let's end there.